Good morning. Good morning, morning, Baltimore. They're very quiet. <laughs> Are they? Not enough coffee, I think. I think they had a big night last night, too. <laughs> so, and uh, I mean, we've talked a few times, and really every time we talk, I get teary-eyed, and I hope that, that you find the inspiration and, and endo that I do today. But you have such an incredible passion and have done some amazing things. And if you could just share with the audience a little bit about why you're here and why you've why, th why these pictures are of you carrying a washing machine. Yeah, the washing machine. I get asked, I get asked that a lot. I sat over in the far corner there this morning mm -hmm. and I met some nice ladies and they said, you know, there's a guy going to be on stage and he's carried a washing machine. For, uh... <laughs> and I said, yeah, that's, he sounds like a, a crazy sort of a guy, but that's me. Um, my, <laughs> my own story is that, um, yeah, cliche it is, but I, I'm an Irish alcoholic. And um, it's 11 years, I suppose, since I've had a drink, but- Congratulations. Thank you. But um, in, my, in my own life story, um, you know, I, I probably was affected by anxiety, depression, sleep disorder, but um, if I drank enough Guinness, it really didn't matter because I was mm. medicated. So when I stopped mm. drinking alcohol, like a lot of people, I realized I had a lot of problems I had to fix. So thankfully with friends and family, I managed to fix those. Um, you know, a lot of people don't, the charity that I've raised the money for called Pieta House, and um, they're a fantastic charity. They provide counseling for people who are feeling suicidal or self-harming in Ireland. I was very lucky to have family and friends to, to look after me in my dark hours, but not everybody does, right. you know? So I was very keen to raise money for them. So um, I suppose shortly after I stopped drinking, I did like a lot of men in our thirties. I bought an obscene amount of spandex. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I uh, discovered the joys of triathlon and um, the part of me that it's obsessive or the part of me that does things too much. Mm -hmm. Rather than beating myself up about that anymore, you know, it's, it's the natural side of me that I now channel. So I did Ironman Sweden, I did Ironman UK, and then I decided that those were far too easy. So I did my warm up act for my main event was I did nine marathons in eight days. How do you do um, that? I mean, with a washing machine on my back. And why, um, why the washing machine? Well, I suppose the first thing is you need a media hook and it worked because look, <laughs> I'm, I'm here at BB. I'm, hello, BBCon. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've been on loads of national TV stations. Mm -hmm. um, I was Googling my name the other day and I found uh, the Tokyo Times had an article in Japanese. You know, you've, you've, you've come up with a good idea when, t when you're being written about in Japan, but yeah. there, there are two simple reasons I carry a washing machine. One is to remind people, you know, in, in the auditorium here today, there's someone sitting beside you, a colleague who's traveled to the conference with you and they smile, they joke, they're in, they seem very, very happy, but they can be carrying an extremely heavy, heavy mm -hmm. load and it's invisible. Um, regrettably in Ireland, we lose 10 people a week to suicide, which is a very, very large mm -hmm. number given our population. Mm -hmm. And the reason many of those people die is that they don't share the load, which is our slogan, share the load, mm -hmm. don't carry something stupid, ask for help. I suppose the second reason too is, you know, to encourage people that um, sometimes you need to send that text, make that phone call, you know, go to that ball game, mm -hmm. have that yeah. barbecue and, and reach out to people and ask, you know, are they in help? You know, mm -hmm. I think the most common question people ask me about the washing machine is, you know, how heavy is it? It's, it's about the same weight as an average 11 year old, about that size. <laughs> so, um, running a marathon with an 11 year old does not sound fun. No, it's, to it's, me. It, it, it hurts a little bit. It hurts a little bit, <laughs> but, um, you know, most people in the auditorium say your cell phone isn't heavy yet. If you extend that and hold it for long enough that weight mm -hmm, will take right. your arm off. So if you have a problem, if you're, you know, if you're under pressure for work or for your family or your sexuality or whatever the issue is mm -hmm. with you in your life, you know, sharing that load will reduce the weight yeah. greatly and it could save your life. What's next for you? Um, whenever I'm asked that question, I know my wife is sitting somewhere to the right and I'm always keen <laughs> to look over and get permission. Yeah. Um, <laughs> What's next is to remain married and get permission, yeah. yes. <laughs> That's a great goal. Uh, it's a fact, it's funny, yeah. but it's true. Uh, we're together 30 years. I met my wife on a Monday and asked her to marry me on a Wednesday. So I always tell people I'm not as stupid as I look. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, the first event, I, my, literally I said to my wife, I was going to walk from Belfast to Waterford, which is nine marathons in eight days. And like all good wives, she said, is that all? Yeah. And I said, well, I'll carry a washing machine. And she said, do it. And I said, I will. So that humor That's ended great. up in this adventure. Um, on that walk, I lost all of my toenails. Um, mm. I lost my fat pads. My heels came off. Um, I broke both my feet. I had hallucinations. Um, it was absolute hell. 
but it was absolute magic. And um, because mm -hmm. of that, um, last summer I attempted to climb Mount Kilimanjaro, which you can see that lovely photograph there. Someone said to me this morning, it looks like I photoshopped a washing machine onto my knee, but that is in <laughs> fact my Biko washing machine. And um, I made it to 17 and a half thousand feet. I didn't quite make it to the summit. Um, I knew I was being invited to speak at BBCon, and I know you have a very strict policy with not having any speakers who have died. That is true. So, that is true. Uh, I decided probably best to turn around and come back. My oxygen levels had gone to 75 on the oximeter. So um, I remember the doctor asking me, you know, he pointed to my wife and he said, do you know who that is? And I said, yeah, of course I do. But I didn't know who she was wow. and, and I, I didn't know who I was. Mm. So it was time to turn around. But um, on summit night, you know, our, our Facebook page is called P the Pieta Challenge. But on summit night, the slogan on the side of that machine became reality. The slogan is share the load, ask mm -hmm. for help. And there were probably 15 or 20 different endings I would have had to that epic adventure. Mm -hmm. um, but the ending that will help most people, the ending that um, made the biggest impact on people's lives in Ireland and I know internationally has been that message, share the load, ask for help. That's great. So final question for you, what keeps you going? Um, well, if I could go back to that first, the nine marathons in eight days, um, on the finish line that day, um, I've, I've often told this story to people and I, I, I apologize in advance if I have hit a speed bump and my voice goes, but um, this lady came over to me and she said to me, um, she said, do you mind if I get a selfie with the washing machine? Which is, which is a <laughs> with very- With you and the washing machine? It's a, very, just... it's a very frequent thing. Yeah. But uh, she sat on the washing machine, she took, my, she took a photo and she said, have you got a moment to talk? And I said, always. And she explained to me that, she said, you know on your walk when you went through hell, when your feet were in pieces and your mm -hmm. body was breaking down? I said, yeah, <laughs> I remember. Um, she said, I was going through an awful time in my life. And she said, I wrote a letter to my husband and I said goodbye because I had decided I couldn't live any longer. Mm. And she explained that she got every piece of medication that she could together in the house. And she said, the one reason I didn't do it, she said, was I had hope from you. Um, someone I never met was raising money for a charity that was going to help me. And she said the next morning, um, I told my husband for the first time that I was going through hell. And she said, nine days later, I've come today to thank you for saving my life. No. Um, and I suppose, you know, I was, I was delighted to have the opportunity to come and speak here today. Um, you know, we were, we were speaking earlier this morning about my number, 28,000. Um, <clears throat> I know it's a very upbeat conference and everyone's having a great time, but I've bad news for you. Um, the average American lives 28,000 days. So you could all die in the next five seconds. It's highly unlikely, don't panic. <laughs> so if we go five, four, three, two, one, you got lucky this time. But at some stage in your life, everybody in this room knows no matter how much quinoa you eat or how many triathlons you do or how clean your water is. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. And, and my, my, my life perspective is this, that I think, you know, the, the essential thing of being human is that we reach out to each other, um, that we help each other, whether it's with technology, whether it's in, in our presence or interactions. Oh, Enda, thank you so much for being with us. So thank you. Please join me in thanking Enda for his amazing story. So Enda just inspires me. Um, I don't know how else to say it. I, I know he inspires all of you. I can see it. Um, but here's one of the coolest things about Enda is that all of you, whether you're a school, a hospital, a nonprofit, a faith-based organization, a company with the CSR program, like all of us have ENDAs in our network. Those are the people who are just waiting for that spark to ignite them, to take your cause to the next level. And we're working every day at Blackbaud to help you find ways to give a voice to those folks, right? Those folks to, to give them a meaningful, scalable path to engage with you.